In this video, we are going to discuss about some client-side languages. In the previous video, we saw how a client-server model works on the internet or any computer network. Now, for communication over the network or communicating with the server, we need some languages. So, in this video, we will look at two of those languages, HTML and XML. HTML. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It is a language that is designed in such a way that its part of text can be marked to specify its structure. For example, you will just write a few words like my name is Amir. So that name can then be given some tags so that at some places it will be black, some places it will be red, some places it will be bold, some places it will be italicized. So that is called marking up the text. The HTML language is created in such a way that the complete program that is written is always in the form of tags. According to the tags, that page will be displayed. Why this is so useful? It is so useful because all the browsers or the systems that are accessing the web server to get the resource are different. Web browsers might be different, system specifications might be different, but the web page is same. Now, the people who own the web page, they want that it should be shown on all the systems in the same way. For doing that, displaying the web page in the same way on the different systems or different browsers, this HTML language was developed. Now, this HTML file is sent to the client by the web server and then the browser will process that HTML file and then display it on the system. In this way, it is maintained that all the resources are displayed in the same way on the web server and web client. Now, let's look at another language, which is the XML, Extensible Markup Language. HTML was created just to process and display the HTML pages or the web pages. XML is a language that can be used to create another language. Very surprising? Yes. But you can actually use XML to create new languages. Why? Because it is a markup language that is designed to store and transport data in safe, secure and correct way. Using HTML, we were transferring the web pages. What if we have to transfer the data? For transferring of data, you do not again need to transfer the data as it is. If I want to display it in a tabular form, that I will dis then I will save it and transfer it also in a tabular form. No, I can just keep it as it is and tell the web browser that yes, I want it displayed in a tabular form. That is what a markup language does. What XML does is when you are transferring data, then that data could be about different things. That for example, that data is about employees of an organization. For example, that data is the database of list of diseases that affect human beings. That data could be the inventory management data of a restaurant. So these all are very different types of data, but they have to travel over the net. So to find a common way in which all sort of data could travel securely, XML was created. So how XML actually does it? Any XML document will have two parts, its structure and its content. Structure will define that what are its elements and content will your actually data. So let's take an example so that we understand this in a better way. Say for example, your school library wants to create a database of magazines that it subscribes to. Okay, so it wants to basically create a catalog. Now, I am going to create a catalog XML file. Let's see how that catalog XML file will look like. This is the structure. Each book or each magazine will have a title, publisher, frequency and price. This is the way it is saved. The next magazine will again have this title, publisher, frequency, price. Now, this data will be stored in this way in a file. When this needs to travel over the net and then be displayed somewhere, 
at that point of time some other software will retrieve this and show it in the form that the user desires this xml file has information about all the magazines available in the library it just has the information it is not concerned about showing it another piece of code can be easily written to extract analyze and present data stored here just compare it to html i told you that html file is processed and displayed by the web browser similarly this xml file will be retrieved processed and displayed by another software this is how the xml works so in this video we have seen how we can use web languages to store our data and display it on the clients in the next video we are going to discuss about web scripting languages